Hello there and welcome to my channel. Today I will be making a feculent gnarl maw. Now the f we're going to start off with taking the model apart, cleaning the model, and then assembling as needed. Now we are, for ease of painting, we're not going to assemble the base to the main tree and we're not going to attach the, I, I don't know what those are, those giant blood sack bulbs, I don't know. And we're not going to attach the bell, so we assemble up to the point where it gets in the way of painting. Now after the basic assembly, there are some gaps between the model, and we're going to fill those up. We're going to take some Liquitex modeling putty, and we're going to use this to fill in the gaps between the pieces of the model that are going to be exposed. Now we don't want to add any texture to this model like I've done before because, well, I mean, th this model's pretty good enough, there's no real need. So we want to try to make sure that all the putty we put on it is smooth. Spoiler, I don't do it perfectly well, but it blends in well enough. After priming the entire model and all the pieces, I then move on to the undercoat. I then take a sandy tan ink and I'm going to use this as the undercoat. I'm going to spray it onto the shadows and undersides of the entire tree. I'm going to spray it onto the undersides of all the uh, globe thingies, which in the end didn't matter, now looking back. And then I'm going to use it to spray the, I don't know what these things are, tube tendril thingies? because those will have shading and stuff. I should have also used this to coat the entire dirt ground since it's pretty much the same color as Baylor Brown that I use in the end. But, well, that's for the next model. Now I'm gonna take some pallid witch flesh and I'm gonna use this as the first highlight from above. I'm going to do this at like a 45 degree angle and such, and we're just going to use this to add the lighter color to the model. Now with some Rhinox Hide, I'm going to use this as the base coat for the tree bark itself. Now I didn't dilute it enough because it has to be diluted with enough water so it's somewhat translucent, and so when I applied it onto the tree, all my base coat and stuff really didn't show through, yeah, sadly. After all the bark is painted, I then move on to Doom Bull Brown, and I'm going to do a dry brush of this all over so that it hits the upper layers of the bark. So I'm going to take the Doom Bull Brown and dry brush all over the entire model, or at least the bark parts. I then take some Agrax Earthshade and then I apply it to the entire model. However, somehow I don't actually have footage of this, I don't know how I messed that up, but I do have footage of my next step of taking Doom Bull Brown again and dry brushing again over it on the highlighted and raised areas. 
So on the top of branches where light would be hitting, on the upper raised areas, and the overall upper half of the tree, and the tops of the roots as well. Now using white scar white, a pure white, we're going to move on to the, I don't know what these are, tube thingies? And we're going to begin by highlighting and dry brushing on them the bright white on all the raised areas, the upper raised areas, all the edges and stuff of these tubes on the model and on the base. I'm going to use contrast paint Gullum and Flesh for the tubes and stuff. It lays a very good uh, foundation and puts a lot of good depth and shadow because I'm going for an overall pinkish color, pinkish tone in the end, and this lays a very good foundation for it. So I'm going to start by painting all of the tubes this color and making sure it doesn't pull anywhere too much. Now moving on to contrast paint Magos Purple. This is a relatively weak contrast paint. It doesn't ha it doesn't really cover that well. The Gullum and Flesh is a better foundation, but we're going to take this and we're going to apply it to all the tentacle thingies or tubes or whatever, and this will work really well. Now I want to add some more definition to these tubes since the models are very well done. I'm going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone, I'm going to take a smaller brush, more accurate brush, and I'm going to dry brush carefully all over the tubes in an upper motion, except on the very tips, which I'll do in every direction. And then this actually reveals that these models have these little spines on it that really stick out. Now going back to some Magos Purple, I'm going to paint the upper areas of the tubes. Now using some Baylor Brown, we're going to paint these bulb thingies. Yeah, we're going to paint the bulb thingies Baylor Brown. Now using some Skeleton Horde Contrast. This is a weaker contrast paint, but it's still a pretty good one. We're going to use it and we're going to fill all the gaps of the bulbs stuff. We're going to use it for the depth of the bulbs. Now I'm going to use the airbrush and using Evil Scun Scarlet, I'm going to use it to do the like underside, like a 45 degree angle from the bottom and add red to it. Now I'm going to use some Zamasi Desert, which is a very light uh, sand color, and I'm going to spray the bulbs again at a high 45 degree-ish angle, but I want to do it lightly. I don't want to heavily coat, I just want to spray on a little bit so it's noticeable, to cover up some of the red and to lighten up the upper areas. I don't want to remove the wash that I put on it, I want it to be there, visible. Now using Baylor Brown, 
to paint the dirt, sand, ground, whatever. And being sure not to hit any of the wood trees or the tubes, we want to get a good thick layer on here. Now I'm using this color because I want it to be consistent with the rest of the models in my army, the other Nurgle models. I've been using this color exclusively for the base color. Now we'll be using Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this to paint all the bones and skulls on the ground littered around. We're going to start off with the darkest color, Steel Legion Brown, as a base coat. Then we're going to go do some Bane Blade Brown, and then we're going to finish off with Agrax Earthshade. And then we will go back and do a fine highlight, again, of Bane Blade Brown. Now going back to some Doom Bull Brown, we're going to go and we're going to, how do I say this, paint the lips of the tree? Yeah, we're going to paint the lips on the ground and then we're going to paint the lips up above on the tree, uh, next to the teeth. This thing has weird anatomy, but basically we're painting the lips with this because it's similar to the, uh, whatchamacallit, bark. Now using Ushab Batai Ushab t using this bone color, I'm going to use it to paint the maggots. And we're going to do a base uh, coating of this on the maggots, and then afterwards, we're going to go and get some Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to use this to uh, fill in the depths and add uh, darkness into there. And then after that, what we're going to do is then take Ush uh, we're going to take the bone color again, and we're going to dry brush the big springy brush all the maggots. And this is going to do a basic, simple job. Uh, since the maggots are going to be already in the dark in the end because of shadow and stuff and out of the way, this is going to look good enough. Now using Dawnstone, I'm going to use this to paint all the rocks on the base. Now, this is, there's going to be like uh, some pigment powder added later over all this, so that's going to take care of all the detailing. Uh, so I just want a base coat of this gray rock onto the model. I don't really need to do any special highlighting or anything else like that. It'll be taken care of later.
Now using Magos Purple Contrast Paint, I'm going to use this, I'm going to paint the lips of the tree. Yeah, so I'm going to use this to paint the lips of the tree. Now we're going to take Zamasi Desert and we're going to use this to base coat the teeth on the tree. Now with Mornfang Brown, we're going to use this to paint all the ropes and strings wrapped around the tree for the bells. Now with Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint, I'm going to paint all the teeth on the tree. I then go and do a second coat on the tree. Then using Zamasi Desert again, I go back and dry brush the tips of the teeth with Zamasi Desert. Now using Bestigore Flesh, then Fugan Orange, and then a highlight of Bestigore Flesh, we are going to paint all the boils on the tree, because for some reason, this tree has fleshy boils on it. Now using Nuln Oil, I want to add some more darkness to these rings to make them uh, stand out a bit more. Now using Warp Stone Glow and then Snarsnick Green, I'm going to use it to paint all these bugs that are on the tree. I'm going to use the Warp Stone Glow to 
paint its abdomen and then the snarsnick to paint the, tr uh, the, the wings. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to use this and we're going to seal up the tree. We're not going to varnish the ground yet, we're going to do that differently. And now with Vallejo Natural Umber, we're going to use this and we're going to coat the entire ground, uh, the Zamasi Desert ground, no, Baylor Brown ground, yeah. We're going to paint all that and cover it up. Now using Warplock Bronze as a base, Balthasar Gold, and then Nihal, Nihal, this Oxide paint, what we're going to do is we're going to paint all the brass bells now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint them with the base layer of the Warplock Bronze. Afterwards, we're going to dry brush Balthasar Gold all over them. And after that, we will take the oxide paint and we're going to basically put it on all the edges, uh, on the edges of all the details and stuff. After that, we will go back and use Balthazar Gold to highlight different areas and also to cover up the excessive oxide paint. Now with Liquitex Matte Varnish, I then use this to cover all the uh, pigment powder that I placed on the base coat, or on the ground, the base, the base piece. Using Agrax Earthshade, I use this to paint all the metal pieces, the lead belch and metal pieces, the chains and the hooks on the tree. And now we begin a grand assembly, starting with some fauna. I use super glue and I'm going to use it as a base and I'm going to attach a little bit of fake moss on there. Surprisingly there's a lot of detail on the base and this was the only spot that I could find for it. After that I then use super glue and then I attach the top of the tree to the bottom part. Now that's well sealed in. Then with the super glue I add or I apply it to the tops of the chains and then I just hook on the bells to the tree, which is surprisingly easy. And I miss getting footage of it, but I attach the bulbs onto the front of the tree as well. And now with Liquitex gloss varnish, I now paint every single boil on the entire model. Now you will notice that there is a little nurgling coming out of there. If you want to know how to paint that, I made a video on painting nurglings, and I basically just followed the same thing, just without the texturing.
And now for Nurgle's Rot. We use this as a covering and for extra detail. We're going to place this all on the base and blotches. It'll smooth itself out naturally. Uh, place it all around the base, makes it look good, looks infected, and then we'll place it near the Nurgling, eventually, and we use it to also cover up any kind of mistakes or small things that look a little too out of place throughout uh, the model. And so this is basically used to cover up mistakes and to enhance it. Well, we've reached the end, and my goodness, this model is beautiful. I'm actually very proud of this work. I love it dearly. It looks really, really cool. If I was to rate myself, I'll give myself a 9 out of 10. I successfully accomplished everything I wanted to try to do in vision-wise. I was not disappointed by any action I took. Some things look better than I expected. The closest thing I could think of a mistake is I put the wrong bell on the top left of the model, or the top branch, so it looks like it's hanging at an angle, but that's about it. Apart from everything else, everything looks really good. It turned out very, very well. If I wanted to do even better, probably the I could have probably done some more shading on the lower parts of the branches. Uh, the maggots could have had more detail put into them, but they're kind of a throwaway. And maybe not obscuring some of the detail on the skulls, but apart from that, this model is excellent, and I look forward to using it on the tabletop. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, next up is something not of Nurgle, surprisingly. I got my hands on a model from a completely different range that I'm going to try out.